Hey everybody, today I'm out here in the forest with what I think is the best plug-in hybrid available in America for 2019 and for 2020. What is a plug-in hybrid? Well, this is a regular hybrid that you have the option of charging the battery at home. So this will operate like an electric vehicle for almost 50 miles and then after the battery is exhausted, it will operate as a regular gasoline electric hybrid. You put the gasoline right in back here, you put the electricity in right here behind this particular plug. Now, although I'm declaring this the best plug-in hybrid in America for 2019 and 2020, I have some sad news that broke just today, the day that we are filming this vehicle. We've already had it in the office for about four or five days, and that is that Honda is making this an order-only vehicle in 49 states in America. In California, you'll be able to find them in dealer inventory. The rest of the states in America, you'll have to either order one or you'll have to visit a dealer that has them in stock. Dealers will still be able to order them for stock, but they're not gonna be as available on the ground. I think that's definitely a pity because in states like Colorado, they have a pretty big EV and plug-in hybrid incentive, and that would make the Clarity far less expensive than a comparable Honda Accord. Up front, the Clarity definitely looks like a member of the Honda family. We have very similar styling cues to what we see in the Insight, the Civic, and of course the Honda Accord, but it's also tweaked a little bit because this is the green family of vehicles within the Honda portfolio. So the Clarity comes in three different ways. There's a battery electric vehicle that's available for lease only in California. There's a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle, again, lease only in California. And then there is this plug-in hybrid vehicle. The plug-in hybrid is technically available in all states in the US, as I just mentioned, but it's gonna be a little bit thicker on the ground in California. Now, the overall design language is perhaps a little bit last generation Honda than current generation Honda because the Clarity has been on sale a little bit longer than the Insight or the Honda Accord. But we still get full LED headlamps in all models, this very distinctive daytime running lamp strip. Some folks really like that. I particularly like the design, but some folks here at Alex and Autos haven't really cared for that particular look. And then there are LED turn signals right up at the top. Like the Accord, the Clarity comes standard with Honda Sensing. That's Honda's all-encompassing active safety package. We have a camera behind the windshield that does lane keeping assistance and lane departure warning. We then have a radar sensor up front that gives us pre-collision warning, pre-collision autonomous braking, and radar adaptive cruise control standard. And then the Clarity also has Honda's lane watch system standard. That's a camera over there on the passenger side mirror that looks at the blind spot towards the right side of the car. This is not quite like the blind spot monitoring system that we see in the competition that uses radar sensors in the rear and will give you information about both the right and the left side of the vehicle, but it's better than nothing. As long as you don't need three rows of passenger carrying capacity, the Clarity is my top plug-in hybrid pick in America because this is one of the few no compromises plug-in hybrids. And in the no compromises category, it would basically be this Clarity right here and the Chrysler Pacifica minivan because it has overall interior space essentially the same as the non-hybrid minivan. This is 192.7 inches long, so this is a mid-size sedan in America. It's a little bit longer than a Honda Accord, but definitely right there in the middle of the segment. This is significantly larger on the outside and a little bit larger on the inside than most of the plug-in hybrid competition. This is 10 inches longer than a Prius Prime, a foot longer than the Chevy Volt. It's worth noting that the Volt is no longer sold in America and 20 inches longer than something like the Kia Niro plug-in hybrid. The Clarity is loosely based on the previous generation Accord, but in order to make this a no compromises hybrid, they did change an awful lot about the vehicle. And a lot of that goes on right back here. And I'm not just talking about this fender skirt, which some people think looks a little bit odd. I'm talking about the overall proportions of the back end. You'll notice that this trunk right back here, and it is a trunk just like a sedan, is definitely higher off the ground than the average midsize sedan in America. That was to allow Honda to package that battery right there under the cargo area and a little bit behind the rear seats while giving us a trunk that is larger than the average mid-size sedan in America and while preserving headroom and legroom on the inside and keeping that very in keeping with the average mid-size sedan as well. Moving to the rear, we have full LED tail lamp modules, which is a nice upgrade over the average mainstream vehicle that will generally have incandescent turn signals and incandescent backup lights. The overall styling back here is definitely a little reminiscent of the Honda Accord Cross Tour, and I'm not exactly sure that's a good thing per se. The overall styling definitely takes a little bit of getting used to, and that is one of the definite downsides to the Clarity. The shapes and the overall style of the vehicle definitely takes a little bit of getting used to. Let me know what you think about that down there in the comment section below. Without question, I think that there are a lot of other plug-in hybrids that are a little bit more attractive than the Clarity in America, but the looks are not why this is my top-end pick. It's actually about the functionality for the Clarity. 
Under the hood, we have one of the more unique hybrid systems available in America. This is quite different from the average hybrid. So Ford, General Motors, Toyota, and FCA, they all use hybrid designs that are very, very similar in operation. This one's quite different and better adapted for plug-in hybrid and future electric vehicle use. We have an engine over there on that side. In the Clarity, it's a 1.5 liter four-cylinder engine, essentially shared with the Honda Insight. Under this hood, it produces 103 horsepower and 99 pound-feet of torque. Then on this side of the engine bay, we have a 181 horsepower electric motor. It produces 232 pound-feet of torque at essentially zero RPM. What's unique about this system is the way the motor and the engine work together. Because under most operational situations, there is no connection at all between the engine and the electric motor except for these large high voltage cables running from one side to the other. That's because the engine is permanently connected to an electric starter generator unit. The big synergy here is while operating as an EV, it just has to spin this one electric motor over here that's rated for 181 horsepower. Now, the battery pack in the rear is only capable of delivering about 121 horsepower. So in electric only mode, total power is gonna be 121. In hybrid mode, maximum, you'd get 212, but things here are a little bit more complicated than that because under about 50 miles an hour, Again, you cannot directly mechanically connect the engine to the electric motor. So the electric motor is all you've got. Below about 70 miles an hour or so, maximum total horsepower is 181. At those higher speeds, it can then apply a connection between the electric motor and the engine, and then it will give you the 212 horsepower total. Or when operating in hybrid mode at speeds of around 50 miles an hour or higher or so, it will close that clutch pack, and then it will give you a more efficient hybrid mode. The big deal about this particular hybrid system is that the Clarity is always going to have a very consistent drive feel. It feels very much like an electric car because it is one. That 181 horsepower electric motor is driving you down the road whether it's operating as a hybrid or as an EV. So the overall drivetrain feel is more consistent than what we see in the Prius Prime or especially the Hyundai and Kia hybrids. The battery pack is a 17 kilowatt hour lithium ion pack, and again, it's positioned right back here in the rear of the Clarity. That really helps adjust the weight balance in this versus the average midsize sedan in America. So this has a slightly better weight balance than most of the competition, if you wanna compare this to a regular old gasoline vehicle. Around 12 kilowatt hours of the battery pack are actually usable. That's very similar to what we see, for instance, in the Chevy Volt. It helps improve overall pack lifetime by never fully charging nor fully discharging that battery pack. Charging happens via this charge door right here. You can open it via a button on the remote or a button on the inside of the car. There's a standard J1772 charging connector right there. Charging times will vary between 12 hours and about two hours, depending on the type of electricity you can feed this. If you can give this 240 volts, that will get you the fastest charge. If you're plugging this into a regular old 110 volt outlet at home, it could take 12 to 13 hours to fully charge. And now we must tackle the tricky topic of efficiency and range and how these things work together. For some reason, a lot of folks out there equate overall electric range with efficiency, and that is not necessarily the case. This is overall more efficient than a Chevy Volt when operating on electricity and just about as efficient when operating as a hybrid, even though the overall electric range is five miles shorter. But if efficiency was really what you're after, then you should be looking at something like the Toyota Prius Prime, because it's going to be almost 30% more fuel efficient than either this or the Chevy Volt when operating as an electric vehicle, and it's gonna get you more than 10 MPG better when operating as a hybrid. Unfortunately, in order to get there, they've had to shrink the overall range down to 25 miles of electric range. There are a lot of different pros and cons and trade-offs when designing a plug-in hybrid vehicle like this. The big thing to keep in mind is that when operating as a hybrid, the enormous battery pack that's positioned right back here in the trunk is doing you very little good. And then when operating as an electric vehicle only, the engine that's sitting right up there under the hood is not doing you a whole lot of good at that moment. When designing the Volt, they were really trying to balance the teeter-totter, but the result was that it didn't necessarily excel in either area, electric efficiency or hybrid efficiency. Meanwhile, options like the Toyota Prius Prime and the Hyundai Ioniq plug-in hybrid are obviously focusing on hybrid efficiency, and they're giving up an awful lot of EV practicality as a result. 
I'm gonna use the Volt as an example. If you're the classic Volt shopper out there that wants to drive electric only under almost all circumstances, they never wanna use gasoline unless they absolutely have to, now that the Volt is gone, the Clarity really is going to be the best option in this segment. Because as long as you don't completely floor the accelerator pedal, there's a little detent there to help you stay in EV only mode, this will be an electric vehicle under all situations. It can climb hills, it can go down hills, it can accelerate onto the freeway in electric only mode, and it can heat the cabin. And that's an auto mission for some reason in the Hyundai and Kia hybrids. If you're in a cold climate and you wanna heat the cabin, the Ionic and the Nero plug-in hybrids will turn on the engine to heat the water, to heat the cabin. That's not quite as EV centric as we see in the Clarity. Something that I hadn't considered, but folks over at facebook.com slash Autos commented on was the gasoline range of the Clarity, not the electric range. This has a 290 mile range because behind this door, the fuel filler net connects to a seven gallon gas tank. That is definitely on the small side, but remember this gets over 40 miles per gallon when operating as a hybrid and you aren't really going to be using too much gasoline. Based on the week with the Clarity so far, based on my daily commute, which is 27 miles one way and up and over a 2200 foot mountain pass, this vehicle should last about seven to 900 miles when charged only on one side of my commute. If I was able to charge on both sides of my commute, then the gas tank should last probably about a year or so. On the other hand, if you decide to take your Clarity on a long road trip, Again, 290 miles of range is about half of the range that we find in the Optima Hybrid plug-in or the Sonata plug-in or the Ionic plug-in or the Prius Prime plug-in or the Ford Fusion because all of those are over 600 miles of range. Obviously, the dollars and cents are a strong win for the Clarity, but there are a few things about the Clarity that I dislike. Obviously, the exterior design is a little bit controversial to say the least. Now, a lot of the exterior design components are very practical and very rational. This vent right here and the fender skirt, those are rational, they have an aerodynamic purpose, although some people think it looks a little bit like a 1980s Cadillac. I don't mind that particular design style too much. I just think that the rear end is a little bit high, but again, there's practicality going on here because the battery pack is positioned there, and then they wanted to put a very standard sized trunk on top that caused the whole back end to come up a little bit, and it caused the funky design that we see right back here where this is a glass panel. So when you're looking through the rear view mirror on the clarity to traffic behind you, you're looking through this glass panel and through this glass panel with the spoiler kind of cutting your view in half. It is a little peculiar, uh, especially since you're looking through the trunk in that process because there's another glass panel on the inside right behind the rear seats and you're looking through the mirror, through that glass panel, through this other glass panel at the car behind you. It is a little bit odd. But as I've said before, when people are considering looking at the Clarity, one of the best things about buying the Clarity is that you'll be driving the Clarity and the interior is lovely. And one of the best things about the interior is you can't see the exterior from inside. The interior is also a big selling point for the Clarity. We have quite simply one of Honda's best interiors. The first time I hopped in the Clarity, I had to ask myself, why isn't this called an Acura? Or why hasn't Acura stolen some of these bits? We have very believable fake wood trim on the top here. I do love that look. We also have this suede accent right here in the middle. They're two different color combinations you can get in the Clarity. And then a metallic strip that runs right there across the top separating them. The overall look is definitely very classy and very elegant. Also this floating center console, classy and elegant, also practical because we have a large storage area right there underneath it. Now on the downside, the driver's seat is not as comfortable as the Honda Accord or indeed most top end versions of the competition. Because for some reason we don't get any adjustable lumbar support in the driver's seat. I think that's a really weird omission since the Accord has that particular feature. It's also worth noting that we're in the top end touring trim and we don't have a moonroof right here. So if that's something that you're interested in, you may need to look elsewhere. In terms of overall interior room, the Clarity does very well when stacked up against the competition. I have a decent amount of headroom here sitting uh, very upright in this driver's seat. I still have about an inch and a half of headroom and we have a tilt telescopic steering column with a pretty decent range of motion. Hopping into the back seat, there are two things you'll notice right away. The roominess of the back seat and the overall build quality. The rear doors have the same level of attention to detail as the front. We have a lot of soft touch materials going on, the suede insert, the metal accent trim, etc. back there. It's a very attractive look. And then we have a lot of room back here. Sitting upright in this back seat, my hair is just barely brushing the ceiling, but I can lean my head all the way back and put it on that rear headrest without my head touching the ceiling. And that's not something we can do in every midsize sedan in America. Unfortunately, the trend has been to make midsize sedans a lot swoopier, a lot sexier, that's cut down on rear seat headroom, but because of the position of the battery and Honda raising that trunk up, they've been able to keep the roof line a little bit higher. 
versus something like a Prius Prime or a Hyundai Ionic, we get a lot more rear seat width. So if you're gonna try and put three people across the back or a child seat in the middle and then two people on each side, this is going to be an awful lot more comfortable. Now in the center position, my head does touch the ceiling, but just barely. But again, we get a little bit more room in here than in some of the competition. Moving all the way over to the right side, you'll notice something interesting. We get less leg room in this vehicle than in the Honda Accord. That's because this is a little bit more closely related to the previous generation model. And then of course, there's the battery pack back there. But with this front seat adjusted for a six foot five passenger that I had in the vehicle, I still have about an inch and a half left. Although you would find about four inches more leg room in something like the Honda Accord. Now it's worth noting that as far as combined leg room goes, the Ionic does very well in this segment and it's only a hair smaller than the Clarity. The rear seats fold in a 60-40 fashion. They're not quite level with the cargo area in the back, but it's not too big of a bump, and we do have a trunk pass through to the rear. The rear seats fold in a 60-40 fashion. They fold almost flat with the cargo area in the back, and we still have this trunk pass through right here. That's unusual for a plug-in hybrid midsize stand. If you take a look at the Ford Fusion, for instance, you don't really have anything this big going on back there. It's really been only recently that regular hybrids have had trunk pass-throughs like this, and this is a plug-in hybrid with a battery that is nearly 15 times the size of what we see in the Accord or the Camry hybrid, and yet we still have this trunk pass-through. Now, obviously, this is not quite as large as the pass-through we find in the Accord or the Camry, but at least it has one. Cargo capacity is definitely a win for the Clarity. Behind this trunk lid, we find 50% more cargo space than we find in an Optima or a Sonata plug-in or the Ford Fusion plug-in, and we have a pretty deep trunk. So you can see I can put a 22-inch roller bag in this position or rotate it right like that 90 degrees and still close the trunk lid very easily. This means you could put an awful lot more luggage back here than you could even in the average regular midsize sedan that's not a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid. Now in our 24 inch roller bag test, we were still able to fit only four bags back here because of the size of that last 24 inch roller bag. However, you could put three of these 22 inch roller bags and four of those 24 inch roller bags back there. And that definitely is more than you'll find in the Camry or in the Accords trunk. Now the trunk is a little bit funny shaped. We'll zoom in a little bit closer so you can see. Now because of the battery, the trunk is a little bit oddly shaped. So this rear section of the trunk is for some reason about three inches higher than the part that's a little bit closer to the bumper. And then we have this beam right back here that runs across the trunk, limiting that cargo space just a little bit as well. There's no spare tire under the floor, but if we lift up this cargo compartment, we have a little bit of extra storage space and a place where you can keep your power cord that comes with the car. Thanks to the bigger battery pack and the general design of the Clarity, zero to 60 times are a little bit slower than the Accord Hybrid, even though we have a design of the hybrid system that is very much the same and produces the same 212 combined horsepower. This model went zero to 60 in seven and a half seconds when in hybrid mode, regardless of whether the engine was on or off. And if you drive this along in electric only mode, then it stretches out to 9.6 seconds, zero to 60. One thing that I like about the Clarity is that they've made staying in EV mode operation very easy because the accelerator pedal has an extra switch at the end of its travel. So if it's almost all the way down, you can feel if there's a little bit of resistance there and then you have to click beyond it if you want hybrid mode. And there's enough resistance there that it's pretty easy to drive just in EV mode if you want to. I found this a little bit easier to deal with than the system that we find in the Ford Fusion Energy. The Clarity also has no issues with higher speed EV operation, something that other EVs out there can't do. So for instance, 85 or 90 miles an hour in EV mode, not a problem in the Clarity, but that isn't available in all other EVs out there. When it comes to overall acceleration figures, this does perform quite well compared to most of the competition. Something like the Nero and the Ionic, they're going to be significantly slower than this zero to 60, even when operating as a hybrid vehicle. The Prius Prime, just over 10 seconds, zero to 60 in hybrid mode, not the EV mode. The Ionic and Nero are over nine and a half seconds or so, and this manages to also be a little bit faster than the Chevy Volt. That's because we get more power out of this combined hybrid system than those other options. The hybrid system that we see in the Hyundai and the Kia does not produce a whole lot of power. And that's why even when those vehicles are operating in their hybrid mode, they go zero to 60 about the same time that it would take the Clarity to go in EV mode. Even though the Clarity weighs about 4,000 pounds, which is significantly heavier than the average mid-sized sedan or the average mid-sized hybrid in America, stopping distances are still fairly short. You can thank the weight balance, having that big battery back there in the rear, and the wide tires that this model has on it for that. We stopped from 60 miles an hour back to zero in 118 feet. So this is definitely very, very good. 
The wide tires also really contribute to the handling ability of the Clarity. I'm going to go ahead and give this an A- when it comes to handling. The Clarity definitely has a little bit of body roll out on the road, and these are low rolling resistance tires, but the extra width of the tire that we have here, the weight balance in the Clarity, etc., really helps improve the handling out on the road. Something like the Toyota Camry Hybrid or the Honda Accord Hybrid, they're going to outhandle this model, of course, but this does very well when pitted against things like the Optima Hybrid, especially in the base form, the plug-in Optima Hybrid, uh, the plug-in Ford Fusion, etc. Out on a rougher road like we're on here, you'll notice that the Clarity is a little bit softer tuned than the Accord or the Camry. This has one of the more comfortable and more compliant rides in the mid-size sedan segment. So if you're looking for a mid-size sedan that has a lot of room on the inside but also delivers a comfortable ride, this is definitely going to be a good alternative to any of the other mid-size sedans out there. Overall, I'm going to give this an A plus when it comes to our ride score because I generally like a vehicle with a slightly more compliant suspension. I live out on this particular gravel road and this really soaks up the larger and smaller imperfections very easily. Talking about fuel economy in a plug-in hybrid vehicle can be a little bit tricky. A lot of people have really strong opinions on how fuel economy should be calculated. This particular vehicle treats the electricity as if it was free. So when we take a look at the fuel economy meter on the car, it says we've been averaging 169 miles per gallon. That's because we've burnt, you know, perhaps half a gallon of fuel, we've gone a ton of miles, etc. That's what it thinks that our average fuel economy is. This vehicle does not take the electricity consumed into account at all. And that's very different than the fuel economy calculation method we see, for instance, in the Chrysler Pacifica minivan hybrid, because that one attempts to give you some sort of calculated number for the electricity used, and as a result, it would never give you these lofty fuel economy numbers that you see in this or in the Chevy Volt. The Volt also uses the same method of fuel economy calculation. In our real-world driving cycle here, this vehicle was averaging between 44 and 45 miles per gallon. You'll notice that that average is a little bit above the EPA score. I think the big reason for that, again, as I said earlier, is that I go up and over a 2200-foot mountain pass, and this is able to keep regenerating power back into the battery all the way down the hill, and you wouldn't be able to get that in a regular hybrid. The reason I give the Clarity an A- when it comes to fuel economy is that there are electric vehicles out there that are more efficient than this when operating as an electric vehicle, and there are dedicated hybrids out there that are more efficient than this when operating as a hybrid. For instance, this is notably below the Camry and the Accord when it comes to overall fuel economy in hybrid mode, or of course the Ionic plug-in hybrid. The counterpoint to that, of course, is the electric range. If you treat the Clarity nicely, you could get about 50 miles of EV range out of it, and that is definitely more than we see in the Ionic, the Prius plug-in, etc. But as I said earlier, range does not necessarily equate directly to overall efficiency, and this is not going to be as efficient as some of the competition. On the other hand, the Clarity is just a very easy to live with vehicle. It's overall very comfortable. I do again wish that we had adjustable lumbar support on the driver's seat, but aside from that, everything else about the Clarity is just easy to deal with. It's comfortable, it's attractive, the fuel economy is decent, the battery pack provides enough range for me to get all the way from home to the office or from the office back to home, and it provides enough oomph to get this up and over that 2200 foot mountain pass on battery power alone. So if, for instance, you were in my situation and you were interested in shifting most of your consumption from gasoline to electricity, this is the kind of vehicle that could make that a reality. On the other hand, driving something like the Ford, the Hyundai, the Kia, or the Toyota plug-in hybrid vehicles, I would only be able to shift a portion of my consumption from gasoline to electricity, and for a lot of shoppers out there, that's not really what they're after. They really want the electric car feel most of the time, but they want the backup plan, and that's exactly what the Clarity gives you. At the moment, the Clarity only comes in two different trims. There's the base trim, and then there's the touring trim that we were driving. There's not too much of a difference in terms of overall feature content between the two. They have the same audio system. They both have Honda Sensing, Honda's all-encompassing active safety system. But the top-end two-ring trim gets leather, navigation, remote climate activation, and power seats. That's essentially the difference between the two models. When comparing the Clarity against the average family sedan in America, say something like a Honda Accord, the Clarity may seem expensive at first. But as I said before, definitely keep in mind the federal, state, and local incentives. At the moment, the Clarity still qualifies for the full $7,500 federal tax credit, whereas something like a Chevy Volt no longer does. And that's the big reason that General Motors decided to remove the Volt from sale in America, because all of a sudden the Honda Clarity was significantly less expensive to the average shopper. Now, as I always say, be sure and check with the tax professional to make sure that tax credit applies to you.
In addition to the federal incentive, there are also incentives in some states that could reach up to $5,000. For instance, in Colorado, that could end up getting $12,500 off the MSRP of the Clarity, as long as you bought one. If you lease one, then the overall credits become a little bit different. For the sake of argument, let's just assume that you'll only get the $7,500 federal tax credit. That would bring the effective price of the Clarity down to $25,900. That's still a little bit more than a base Honda Accord at $23,720 or a base Honda Accord Hybrid at $25,320. But remember that the base Accord and even the base Hybrid Accord don't come with the same kind of standard equipment that we find in the Clarity. So if you were to try and comparably equip them to the base Clarity model, you'd end up more expensive. The big omission on those two models is that they don't have Android Auto and they don't have Apple CarPlay at that particular price. But on the other hand, they do have the newer infotainment software that Honda offers, and the interior and exterior styling is perhaps a little bit less adventurous than what we see in the Clarity. If you step up to the touring trim of the Clarity, then the deal gets even better, because it'll be several thousand dollars less than a comparably equipped hybrid Accord. The Clarity isn't just less expensive to buy, it's also less expensive to operate. Assuming $3 a gallon and 12 cents a kilowatt hour, driving a standard Accord around for a year and 15,000 miles would cost you $1,450 according to the EPA. Moving down to the Accord Hybrid, that would drop that price down to $950 a year, but moving down to the Clarity, you'll see that drop another $250 down to $700 annually. And your true cost to operate would really depend on how often you can charge, because if you're very rarely using the gasoline engine, then that cost of operation is going to drop even further, especially if you live in an area where there are free public charging stations or if your employer allows you to charge for free. Even assuming that your employer does not allow you to charge for free, however, the Clarity is likely going to save you money over the regular Honda Accord. Based on the driving that we did during our week in the Clarity, one tank of gas in the Clarity, which is again a very small tank, about seven gallons, would last well over a thousand miles. That's because even if I forgot to charge here and there, the battery is big enough to get me all the way from home to the office and all the way from the office back home if I were able to charge it on both ends. And that would include going up and over that 2200 foot mountain pass. The average American out there would have absolutely no problem going to the office and then going right back home on a single battery charge. And then if you needed to go on those longer road trips, you simply let the gasoline engine start. At the moment, there are just four plug-in hybrid sedans in this category. There's the Clarity, with about 50 miles of electric range. We have the Ford, which gives us 26 miles, the Kia, which gives us 29, and the Hyundai Sonata, which gives us 28. Comparing the Clarity to any of the three other plug-in hybrid sedans in America, I think the Clarity is clear and away the winner. We get by far the longest range, we get excellent efficiency, and we don't really have any sacrifices when it comes to cargo capacity because we have a trunk that's about the same size as the average family sedan in America. And if we take a look at something like the Ford Fusion Energy, you'll see that that trunk is truly, truly compromised. And we see something very similar in the Kia and the 2019 Sonata as well. Obviously, the downside for the Clarity is the exterior styling. I agree that the Fusion, the Optima, and the Sonata, all three of them are more attractive than the Clarity on the outside. But the Clarity really makes up for it in terms of its interior refinement, because I do like the Clarity's interior a little bit better than the Fusion, the Sonata, or the Optima. And then there's the practicality factor. It's just a more practical vehicle overall. When you combine that with the electric range and the expected cost of operation, hands down, the Clarity is the winner here. Now, I know someone out there in the comment section is going to say, but what about the Model 3? Well, what about the Model 3? The Model 3 is an electric vehicle. We're talking about plug-in hybrids here. So this is a very different shopper. If you want a full electric vehicle and you want to go all in on EVs, the Model 3 is definitely going to be an EV sedan choice for you. But if you're not ready to be a full EV buyer and you really are looking for a plug-in hybrid, that EV with the backup plan, then the Model 3 is not really a direct competitor. The other trouble with the Model 3 is that it's a luxury vehicle. So comparing a Model 3 to something like the Clarity or a Honda Accord is like comparing a Toyota Camry to a BMW 3 Series. Can you do it? Sure you can. But does that really fit into most consumers, most shoppers' mindsets when they're buying a vehicle? That I'm not so sure. And the price tag is the big reason here, because the two vehicles may be relatively similar on the inside in terms of overall size, and the Model 3 definitely has high efficiency, it definitely has good range, etc., but it is an EV, and it's going to be more expensive. Yes, the base version of the Model 3 does still exist, and it's still about $35,000 plus delivery, 
But like most luxury vehicles, you have to be careful with the options because if you want a color other than the base color, which at the moment appears to be white, you'll be charged between $750 and $2,000 extra for that optional color. And you could take a look at the color palette on the Clarity, they're all the same price. If you want adaptive cruise control, which is standard on the Clarity, that's $3,000 extra on the Tesla. If you want to buy into the full self-driving, which they will sell you now, but obviously is not ready yet, that is thousands of dollars more expensive. The other thing to keep in mind is that the Model 3 no longer qualifies for the full federal tax credit. At the moment, it is now down to $1,875 off versus the $7,500 that we still see on the Clarity. And at the end of 2019, that will drop down to zero. That means that the delta between getting a Clarity in its base form and a Tesla Model 3 in its base form is going to be $11,125. That's a pretty darn big bump. Clearly, for some shoppers out there, an $11,000 jump is not going to be a big deal. But for the average mid-sized sedan shopper out there, a 40% price bump is a pretty big deal. So that really puts the Model 3 out of the running. Now, admittedly, the Model 3 is more efficient. Driving at 25 miles will save you about 16 cents versus driving that same 25 miles electric mode in the Clarity. But it'll take a really long time for the average commuter to start saving money. Break-even point's going to be right around 1.8 million miles for the Tesla. Even if you were to go by the EPA's average balance of electricity and gas operation in the Clarity, the formula that they use to come up with the annual fuel cost, it would take about 700,000 miles for you to break even on the Tesla versus getting the Clarity. And that's assuming that you're not going to have any reliability problems in the Tesla, and of course, assuming that the cost of insurance is identical across the models, which generally speaking, it won't be. For most folks out there, insuring a Clarity should be a little bit less expensive. Logically, because the Tesla is a more expensive vehicle and the repair parts are going to cost more when it does get into an accident. Bottom lining the Clarity is pretty darn easy. It is quite simply one of the best plug-in hybrids in America, and I would say it ties with the Chrysler Pacifica Hybrid for being the best plug-in hybrid period in America. Obviously, the Clarity and the Pacifica Hybrid are two very different vehicles, so if you need seating for seven and you want the plug-in hybrid ability, that's definitely an excellent option. But if you're looking for something that's more sedan-shaped, a little bit more fun to drive, then that would definitely be the Honda Clarity. Let me know what you think about that down there in the comment section below, and also also, let me know what you think about the overall exterior styling of the Clarity. Would you buy the Clarity? Would you buy the Accord? Or would you be willing to give up some of the practicality and go for one of the other options? As always, be sure and find us over at facebook.com slash so you can see what I'm driving this week, and I'll see you later.